Now let's talk about the effects of speed. For a stun shot, speed has no effect on the direction of the cue ball. It heads exactly along the tangent line for its entire path, regardless of speed. But for other shots, for a rolling shot with top spin or a draw shot with bottom spin, the speed does have an effect. Regardless of the spin, the cue ball always starts along the tangent line. For faster speed shots, it persists along that line longer and the curve is delayed. So a fast speed draw shot would do something like this. Start along the tangent line, curve gradually, it takes a lot longer for the curve to happen. Same thing applies for a follow shot with top spin. With slow speed, the cue ball persists along the tangent line for a very short amount of time. It curves almost immediately and heads straight towards that 30 degree direction. But for a faster speed follow shot, it will persist along the tangent line longer. The curve is delayed before it curves in that 30 degree direction. So we have to take that into account when we're judging the exact path of the cue ball. Our 30 degree direction tells us the direction it would go for a slow shot. But for a faster shot, the cue ball would drift along the tangent line longer before it heads in this 30-degree direction. And the hand is still useful to help us predict that. So if you get a feel for how much the curve is delayed with speed, you just have to shift your hand down the tangent line slightly. That tells you where the cue ball would head. So for a faster speed shot, it would head in the 30-degree direction offset slightly this way. Same thing for draw. For a faster speed draw shot, It'll persist longer and head in a trisect direction, but offset slightly. Let's look at the 30 degree direction example. I'll start off with a slow speed. So you can see it deflected pretty much immediately. We didn't see any noticeable motion along the tangent line because it curves almost immediately and heads in this 30 degree direction. Now let's hit one harder. So again, top spin. Cue ball has to be rolling in impact. Okay, so with that shot, the cue ball drifted along the tangent line and the curve was delayed slightly. By the time it went to the 30 degree direction, it ended up hitting about here, to the left of our ideal chalk slightly. Alright, so that's important to know. If you want to break up a cluster here at high speed, you have to account for the slight shift due to speed. Now with a draw shot at high speed, this is a good example where we have to take that speed into account. The trisect system predicted a direction this way, but at high speeds, the cue ball is going to drift, the curve is going to delay before it heads in that final direction, and we risk scratching at high speed. So let's try that. Again, near maximum draw at high speed. Now I did avoid the scratch, but you can see the cue ball did shift quite a bit to the right. If I hit it harder, it would delay even longer before it curves and probably scratch. Try one more. So in that case, you could see that the curve was delayed longer before the cue ball headed in a 90 degree direction. Therefore, we scratch. So you definitely have to take speed into account when you're using these three reference lines.